Welcome back to this Magic the Gathering Streets of New Capenna Draft Primer. This is How to Draft MTG and we're talking about mana fixing. Since Streets of New Capenna is a multicolor set, mana fixing will be extremely important. We're going to go over each group of mana fixers in the set, roughly ranked in terms of how powerful they are and how high of a priority they are. We're going to start with the rare Tri-Lands. This cycle of lands enters the battlefield tapped, taps for the three colors of mana of their respective families, and cycles for a cool three generic mana. You may have seen lands like these in Ikoria a few sets ago. The cycle includes Jetmir's Garden, Rafine's Tower, Spara's Headquarters, Xander's Lounge, and Zayatora's Proving Ground. These are the most powerful of the mana fixers in the set and will be easy first picks depending on the relative strength of their respective families. Next we have the Allied Dual Lands. This cycle of land enters the battlefield tapped, taps for two different colors, and can later be sacrificed to draw a card, which is quite nice. This cycle includes Botanical Plaza, Racer's Ring, Skybridge Towers, Tramway Station, and Waterfront District. These will likely be the most powerful non-rare mana fixers as they can tap for multiple colors, which no other non-rare lands in the set can. Pretty nice that they're all at common as well, so we should see them fairly frequently. They each fit into two families, for example, Skybridge Towers fits in Obscura and Brokers, which will help us to stay open early in the draft. I plan to take these lands quite early in the draft, over most of the commons and uncommons, and some of the rares as well. Next is Treasure. Some cards create treasure tokens, which can be sacrificed to add one mana of any color. As mentioned in the previous video, I think Treasure will be very important in the format and will be a high priority in the draft. The best treasure makers are Black Market Tycoon, Courier's Briefcase, Exhibition Magician, Gala Greeters, Jewel Thief, Prize Fight, Professional Face Breaker, and Riveteer's Requisitioner. Some less consistent but still powerful treasure makers would include Big Score, Glittermonger, and Sticky Fingers. Any card that makes treasure will be better than it looks. It's possible red and green will have a significant advantage over the other colors just by having access to better mana fixing via treasure. Gilded Pinions and Halo Scarab are clunky, but can help fix the non-red-green decks. Halo Scarab in particular synergizes with Connive and Casualty. Again, I believe the cards that make treasure are some of the better commons and uncommons in the set, and I'll be taking them quite highly in the draft. Next, let's look at the Family Fetchlands. These lands sacrifice automatically as soon as we play them and allow us to search up one basic land of a color of their respective families. So for example, Broker's Hideout lets us get a forest, plains, or island and put it onto the battlefield tapped, and we gain a life, which is a nice little bonus there. The cycle includes Broker's Hideout, Cabaretti Courtyard, Maestro's Theater, Obscura Storefront, and Riveteer's Overlook. These lands are worth playing even if we only need two of the three colors they can go fetch. These are slightly less flexible than the dual lands, but still are going to be quite high picks in the draft. Next we have the Family Creatures. Each family has a creature at common which, for the cost of two mana, can be exiled from our hand to allow one of our lands to tap for that family's colors. So it kind of upgrades one of our lands into a tri-land. The creature can then later be cast from exile and our land loses that ability. The creatures in this cycle are Glamorous Outlaw, Masked Bandits, Rakish Revelers, Shattered Seraph, and Spara's Adjudicators. These are all a little below average for their mana cost as creatures, but are still quite impactful later in the game. Smoothing our mana in the early turns makes them well worth putting in our deck. These can even be played partially off color, for example, Spara's Adjudicators in an otherwise base Cavaretti deck as they will fix for two out of the three of our colors and can then cast themselves later in the game. Depending on the quality and quantity of mana fixing available, this may be worthwhile to do. Next we'll talk about Ominous Parcel. This is a one mana artifact. We can pay two 
tap and sacrifice it to search for a basic land, put it into our hand, and then shuffle, or five tap and sacrifice to deal four damage to target creature. It's a bit on the expensive side for fixing, but we can definitely play it in a pinch. The four damage mode makes this relevant in the late game as well. It's possible this is a high pick, but I suspect it's a little bit too clunky. And finally, Topiary Stomper is a solid mana fixer, but we must be base green to play it, so it's not a super high priority. And that concludes our video on mana fixing in Streets of New Capenna. Thank you so much for watching. Up next, I'm going to go over my general pick order for Streets of New Capenna. So we'll see you there.